Welcome back to Ten Foot Customs in what is hopefully going to be another short video um, on trying to explain to you what took me quite some time to figure out because I'm not a smart man. And because of that, my brain couldn't comprehend what was going on in the wiring diagram, even though I diagrammed a couple times looked at probably six or seven wiring diagrams. I'm just not used to this style of starter solenoid. This style of starter solenoid has an S-terminal and has an I-terminal. Uh, the S-terminal, step back a step, starter solenoids I'm used to. You have a uh, positive lead and a ground terminal. And when you turn the key, it throws this terminal to ground, causing the solenoid to close, which in turn connects these two poles, starting your, making your, your starter crank. These old Ford styles don't do that. And it took me a little while to figure out exactly what they do. So let me see if I can explain this to you. And I'm 99. Let's not go that high. I'm 93% sure I've got it. I, I, I understand it now. We have a red hot lead that we've repaired and ran it all the way over here. And you can't see it, but it comes down here to the coil. And it is on my coil um, hot uh, positive lead. So when the key comes on, the coil gets 12 volts. Um, actually, the coil's on right now. I can feel it. It's warm. Um, and I will show you. So key on. You should hopefully be able to see that. Key is on to that hot lead to ground. You're getting 1104, 1105. The battery's kind of low. Hasn't, I haven't charged it in a bit and uh, uh, the alternator hasn't charged it long enough to bring it up. So 1106. Hot lead. Now, let me go shut down, shut off the ignition. Now with the ignition shut off, that terminal, we've got nothing, which is what we should have. Now, what makes this work slightly different is, in my wiring diagram, it shows a 1.35 ohm resistor wire. And I've never seen that before, and I wasn't quite sure what it was for. And then I found out that these coils don't like having 12 volts for a very long time. It'll burn them out. I don't understand that. Like, why wouldn't you just put a 12 volt coil in? But it's what it is. That's what I have. So, how this system works, it's kind of simple once I figured it out. This blue wire from my ignition, when I turn my key to run, or sorry, when I turn my key to start, 12 volts goes through this blue wire. This whole solenoid is grounded through the bottom bracket, which then goes to this ground strip, goes to the battery. So this is, this is grounded. When you hit start, it throws... I guess you call it a plunger. It throws a plunger out to connect these two terminals. So in turn, it will then energize this pole with 12 volts. How I need to rewire this is this 12 volt lead that I have going down to my coil Double check this really quick. Coil gets the splitter. Okay. So I need to run a second wire from my coil. One is going to come off of I. This is the I terminal. So the I terminal is going to have 12, a, a straight wire from here to my coil. Still warm. 
cooling down. Um, so 12 volt, a straight 12 volt lead from here to here. This line that's coming from my firewall that's keyed on needs to get a ballast resistor in it. So this is a ballast resistor. Um, it's supposed to be 1.3, or I'm sorry, one, yeah, 1.35 ohms of resistance. I don't know what this is. None of these say, even when you go to order them, what they are. They just say that they're ignition ballast resistors. I'm going to assume it's right because it is for a Ford, that this is going to drop my voltage down. So I'm going to mount this probably somewhere right here. And what will happen is this is going to get a straight wire down to my coil. This wire that's coming from my keyed hot is going to go into here, then to come back out of this ballast resistor and go down to my coil. So what happens is when you go to crank, this kicks out. Energizing your starter, but it also sends 12, direct 12 volts down to your coil to help it start, especially when it's cold. So you get a nice strong spark when it's cold and, 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 and needing that to, to fire up. When the key rocks back into the run position, you're continuing to get things between 7 and 9 volts to the coil to continue having the coil be able to spark, but without burning out the coils. Um, that's how this system works. I hope that made any kind of sense. So I'm going to mount this here because it kind of looks nice there. And then I will, will reroute this, this coil wire up to here and re-splice in a new one. So we'll do that really quick. And then we'll see if um, we still got our 12 volts when we hit uh, start. We have marked our hole for the ballast resistor. Come in here and drill it. It is a good thing that I bought this split loom because this will be like the third time I'm taking wires back out of this loom. Okay, so what I can do, once I get this loose and out of here, okay. So you know what I have them taped in here too, which is going to suck. So that is the downside to taping the wires all together, is uh, getting them out kind of not fun. He's stuck on. Oh, for the way. So this, I'm just going to reconnect to here with a spade connector. And to my knowledge, doesn't matter what side of this goes where. It's just a resistor. It should be fine either way. Um, whatever way you get it wired in. So we'll cut this and wire this piece in. So far what we have, we've got this wire here comes in from the hot run wire for the ignition run, goes into here, comes out here, it's going to run down, and this is the other side of it right here, and that will hook to our coil there. Then, we've got this new wire here, which is going to go 
to this terminal. Follow these other wires, red wires down. I'll tuck them into the loom when I'm done. And it's also going to come down to this terminal here. So let me see if I can get that run in there. We'll trim these off down here now. We've got them down. I could, in theory, wire these two wires to the same terminal. It would do the same thing. But just in case I'm doing this wrong, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll run through this one more time so that I remember exactly how this works. You go to start the Jeep. You turn the key to crank. Power comes to this blue wire, to the S terminal, which is for start. That engages the plunger in here, which sends battery voltage to this terminal and also to the I terminal. The I terminal, this one here, then runs 12 volt current to your coil. The Jeep is now started. When you rock the key back into the run position, you are now getting current down this line, which is 12 volts. But once it goes to the ballast resistor, it comes out at between 7 and 9 volts. And that is now powering the um, coil. That is my understanding of how this system works. I don't want to start it now, it's kind of late, but um, I will uh, attempt to check all those voltages Maybe tomorrow when uh, I can get the garage door open and stuff like that. One of the things that I, I read on this is that you'll, you can tell um, if your ballast resistor has gone bad is you'll turn the key and as long as you leave it in start or in, in, in the crank position, the Jeep will run. But as soon as you rock it back into run, it'll quit running. That's because you no longer have your, your 12 volts to it. So, according to what I read, that, that's one way to tell your ballast resistor is bad. I think that's it. I think, other than getting these tied up, which I don't want to do yet, because I may have to hook up that wire again back to the other carburetor I'm putting on, has this electric choke, and I may have to run wires there. So, I may have to run wires in here anyway, so I don't want to get these all tied up if I have to run more wires. I think that's it. Well, I want to thank everybody again for watching this video. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope everybody has a great week.